Okay, this is part two of how matchmaking works. And certainly in my business, as well as what I have learned about why people stay single. And this is juicy because I have been love coaching for at least 15 years. And I've learned over time, people will gather information. Often people love information and they'll receive and receive and receive and take classes and digest lots and lots and lots of information. But the trick is, will they apply it? That's the $100,000 question. So reason number one why people stay single in matchmaking is because they are not coachable. If I tell them what they're doing is not going to take them any place they want to go, and they continue to do that and say, literally, they say, oh, well, and I've had that reply. I said, if you don't stop doing X, Y, Z, you are going to remain single. And the reply was, oh, well, someone either gets me or they don't. And that's fine. But I think what's underlying that, oh, well, and not being coachable is that many people have been single for a period of time, two, five, 10, however many years, they have become comfortable in their life. And they may think they want a partner, but they really don't. They've learned how to exist and have a decent life, absent partnership. And the life they have is stable and working for them. And they don't feel like growing, changing, shifting perspective. They don't. And that they may not have the full awareness that that's what they're doing, but that's what they're doing. And this applies to both men and women, which feeds in to the number two reason why people remain single. Inflexible. Flat out. Will not date off type. Or if they do date off type, they come with lots of judgments. They're not really giving that person a chance. They're just saying, I'm dating, I'm going to give it a try. But they don't really give it a try. They're just going through the motions. And that inflexibility, not only in dating in midlife, but in life, if you can't be flexible and really loosen the grip on your perspective and what you're telling yourself is true, it's not going to happen for you. And I've talked about this before, and this is why I'm working with midlife people, because they're staying single because they're not able to adjust. And everybody in midlife has been disappointed more than once, heartbroken more than once, dreams crushed more than once. And people do varying amounts of work to heal from that. And But most of us still reference the past. Maybe women do it more than men. I don't know. I haven't done a sampling to really tell you for certain. But I'm constantly saying to people, stop using the past to measure your partner for the future. The past is a thousand percent irrelevant. What's relevant from your past is who you became. That's it. You cannot use the experience you had with another person to gauge the person you're talking to now. And if you do that, it's a sabotaging act. Don't do it. You're going to sink the boat. Even if you start dating someone in that early stage when you're wondering if it's going to become something, if you're strategizing and trying to avoid what happened in the past, you're going to sink your ship. Okay. So inflexibility and going back and forth to the past, that's number two. Number three is people are very controlling. I would find, and I will say this is more true for women than men, but I've seen it in my men clients as well. I will try and talk to a woman about the point of view she has about something. And often if it's a male client, I know them very well, but they assert to me, this is how this person is. And I'm like, no, it isn't. You are mistaken. You're looking through some type of filter. I'm like, no. You, no, I know, you don't, Phyllis. Okay, right? I'm not going to become combative and argue with people. You're either going to step out of the control position and allow yourself to be coached, step out of the past, and really try and adjust who you are at this age and become relevant at this age, or you're not. 
Okay. So these are the biggest things I'm seeing and why people are staying single. And for me, the only hard part about it is when people aren't congruent with their motivations and they just think that if I present five, 10, 15 people to them, that somehow one of them will be the answer. And it isn't. I can tell you that the people I present to you will all be viable. Their interests will match your interests. Their values will match your values. And it's someone who really wants to be in a relationship. The rest is up to you. I, I, I'm not a miracle worker. But if you have a lot of preconceived ideas about what a person needs to be, what a person needs to look like, how a person needs to behave, all that stuff. I mean, and I'm talking, generally speaking, not abuse, addiction, affairs. I'm not talking about the extreme things. I'm talking about general behaviors, appearance, etc. If you have strict, strict, strict criteria, you are going to remain single. And I continually talk to people about not, not only not past tripping, but not future tripping about a new person. I cannot tell you the number of conversations I have had with people who they start talking about possible living arrangements or what about if we get married or how will this person fit with, you haven't even met the person yet. What the bleep, what are you doing? So what I encourage people to do is get in the mindset of going to meet a person. So often I say, pretend this is a friend, a, a friend, not a romantic interest, but a friend someone recommended to you and say, hey, go meet my friend at this restaurant. You guys have something in common around work, let's say. Go meet that person absent any, rom any romantic ideas and just see, meet a person and see what you think about the person. And the only thing we know need to know on a first date and discover on the first date is do I want a second date? That's it. And you have to remember it takes time to build connection. It takes time, especially in midlife, because we have so much going on up in here. The thoughts, da -da 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 -da, it's loud in there. We must give it time, and it takes more than one, two, or three dates. If you're fortunate and you end up having that chemistry immediately, more power to you, but chemistry is usually not a good indicator of whether or not a relationship will be successful. And we have to remember chemistry can be born from many places, uh, not just physical appearance. So anyhow, um, this might stir up a few feathers from and y'all, but I'd be really happy to hear any of your questions, comments, and be, you're welcome to disagree with me. I'm just giving you my experience and what I'm seeing. And not only as a love coach for a very long time, but now seeing, you know, boots on the ground in the trenches, uh, matching people for dates. All right, my friends, have a wonderful day.